In Texas 2020, the movie kicks off with a survivor sharing her story. She reflects on how humans, once mighty, are now seen as pests. According to her, Clum's mission on Earth was to eradicate humans and plunder their heritage and way of life. To ensure their dominance, they built a facility for survivors to reproduce and littered the landscape with the bodies of the dying. Those who escaped this grim fate describe it as a place worse than hell. As soon as the Clums arrived, they began slaughtering humans in large numbers. They erected massive structures that emitted methane, altering the atmosphere to suit their needs. To make way for their crops, they wiped out native plant life, leading to a rise in the planet's temperature and subsequent flooding of cities. Moreover, the vermins waged war on Earth by igniting forests, making it nearly impossible for people to breathe, especially near the blazing stacks. When the clums lock eyes with their victims, they can infiltrate their minds, inducing paralysis. Furthermore, the clums possess the ability to manipulate their victims' cerebrum and limbic system, effectively enslaving them. The majority of human survivors have sought shelter underground or in abandoned structures. They scavenge for enough food to sustain themselves and cultivate the determination to resist. They banded together and armed themselves, but due to a severe shortage of supplies, weapons, and ammunition, they had to improvise with whatever they could find to fight back. The Clum's primary weapon, Nanites, posed a significant threat, as they were also part of the Clum's arsenal. Despite the overwhelming odds, the resistance remained resilient, driven by their unwavering determination to liberate humanity from the Clum's grip. They unite, bringing together people of different races and backgrounds, all working towards a common goal, to defeat the Clums and free themselves from their tyranny. They conduct daring raids to rescue captive humans and gather crucial information about the Clums' operations. Witnessing firsthand the dehumanizing treatment inflicted by the Clums, who view humans as mere objects for experimentation and disposal, fuels their resolve. In one harrowing scene, a prisoner, subjected to brutal experiments by the Clums, undergoes grotesque transformations, writhing in agony and pleading for release from his torment. Yet the Clums heartlessly watch as he suffers. Later, the Clums encounter the president of a specific country. With ominous gestures, they summon an unknown device and surgically open the president's head. Horrifyingly, they replace his human cells with alien ones of mysterious origin. Shortly afterward, the extraterrestrials seize control of the president, transforming him into a puppet under their command. He becomes a mere shell, obediently carrying out their orders, including convincing humans to disarm under the guise of promoting peace. Meanwhile, the clums lurking in the shadows ruthlessly hunt down and exterminate any survivors. However, the survivors are not deceived by this facade of false peace, well acquainted with the clums deceptive tactics. In a pivotal moment, Della, adorned with explosives, steps forward feigning surrender, hoping to outwit the clums. Tragically, her attempt to deceive them ends in her demise as they promptly detonate the explosives. Unbeknownst to the clums, Dawson, a cunning survivor, has managed to evade capture and has already set in motion a trap with a hidden detonator switch, poised to strike back against the alien invaders. After a while, the children gleefully celebrate as they discover and hold up a severed limb of the clums. Though their victories are few and small, they serve as crucial morale boosts for the human resistance, even if they don't change much else. Meanwhile, extraterrestrial beings unleash a substance resembling oil, spraying it wildly onto human structures. This ominous act further heightens tensions. To defend themselves against the Clum's mind control abilities, the resistance constructs barriers to shield their thoughts. However, the Clums are keenly aware that without sufficient resources, these barriers will falter, leaving Earth vulnerable to their domination. They anticipate winning a war of attrition against the resilient human survivors. On the other front, the Clums employ female prisoners as surrogate incubators, a cruel practice that inevitably leads to the victims' deaths. After some time passes, the Clums launch a devastating airstrike, decimating a militia convoy. Amid the chaos, a soldier who manages to escape witnesses a surreal sight. A being resembling an angel materializes out of thin air, its presence shimmering like the northern lights. In the days following this encounter, the world undergoes a profound transformation. Nosh, a resourceful pyromaniac and expert bomb maker, thrives in this new reality despite residing in a scrapyard far from the main resistance. His knack for crafting anything from salvage materials, including explosives and brain locks, makes him invaluable to the opposition. Meanwhile, Jasper, the leader of the resistance, herself heavily augmented with cybernetic implants, leads her team to Nosh's makeshift home. They seek to procure arms from him for their cause, 
When one of Jasper's men inquires about obtaining a brain lock, Nosh hesitates, stating that it's not available for purchase. This refusal sparks frustration and tension among the group. In light of Nosh's reluctance, Jasper initiates a conversation, acknowledging their mutual needs and emphasizing that everything comes at a price which they are willing to pay. However, Nosh's response is unexpectedly indifferent. He expresses satisfaction that the Clum's presence allows him to indulge in his fiery tendencies without fear of legal consequences or imprisonment. When pressed further about his fascination with fire, Nosh cryptically alludes to his own demise, suggesting a fatalistic acceptance of his fate being consumed by flames. The members of the Resistance harbor resentment towards Nosh for his callous disregard for life and his disturbing demands, such as using the injured or suicidal as bait in his IED ambushes. Despite their reservations, the Resistance realizes they must comply with Nosh's demands to ensure the safety of the IEDs and brain barriers he provides. Jasper rationalizes that in times of peace, such an arrangement would be absurd, but in this new world, anything is possible. Meanwhile, Amir, a mute prisoner who escaped from the Clums, is discovered by Resistance members in Sector 7. Jasper approaches him, offering reassurance and assistance. She assures him that they mean him no harm and invites him to contribute in whatever way he can to their cause. However, a dissenting voice within the Resistance urges Jasper to eliminate Amir due to the implants in his head. Despite opposition from her lieutenants, Jasper intervenes, commanding them to stand down and releasing Amir from her custody. Instead, she entrusts him to the care of a fellow Resistance member named Sarah. As Sarah tends to Amir, offering him food and drink, she implores him to consider aiding the Resistance in their battle against the Clums. She highlights his precognitive abilities, a result of the Clums' experiments, as a potential asset to their cause. Meanwhile, Jasper, accompanied by her lieutenants, tends to the injured. It is during this grim task that she witnesses the grotesque implants the aliens have inserted into the bodies of their victims. Upon returning to Sarah, she attempts to uncover the extent of Amir's modifications inflicted by the extraterrestrials. Initially resistant, Amir eventually relents, allowing her to examine the extensive cybernetics that envelop his head and shoulders. Despite the profound changes wrought by the new world, Amir emerges reborn with something entirely different. The following evening, the soldiers engage in drills, honing their skills and preparing for the inevitable confrontation. Sarah demonstrates their techniques to Amir, explaining that they strive to fight in the same manner as they did before. Their goal is to prevent the Clums from inflicting further harm on others, just as they did to him. On the other front, one of Jasper's lieutenants questions her about Sarah and Amir's true nature. Jasper reveals a painful truth. She lost her daughter to Clums' experiments while pregnant with Amir. She suggests that Sarah's theories stem from a predisposition to serve the Clums, insinuating that both Sarah and Amir may be unwittingly influenced by the extraterrestrials. Despite initial doubts, Amir experiences a remarkable recovery, both mentally and physically. However, his implanted enhancements grant him a vision of a wounded Clum evading capture by militia forces. Sarah implores Amir to aid the militia officers in their efforts to halt the genocide. As their conversation deepens, Amir notices a change in his eyes and gains clearer insights into the impending attack. Though Amir remains silent, his visions reveal a daring militia raid, employing advanced technology and cybernetic enhancements to down an alien aircraft. The Clum pilot finds themselves on the run. Sarah confronts Amir, questioning whether they will be able to acquire the knowledge necessary to hunt the Clum and strike fear into their hearts. Though Amir remains silent, a powerful vision overtakes him. He sees a Clum employing telepathic force to attack a militia soldier, disconnecting him from his brain barrier and rendering him vulnerable to mind control. The soldier rises to his feet, weapon in hand, and begins firing at his comrades. In self-defense, the remaining soldiers are compelled to eliminate the threat by taking his life. Realizing the implications of his newfound abilities, Sarah informs Amir that he now possesses the Clum's powers and is duty-bound to utilize them for the betterment of humanity. In the Vision's earlier scene, the militia surrounds the Clum, with Jasper commanding them to remove its head. After a fierce battle where many on both sides are hurt, the human resistance successfully sneaks into the Raka's base. There, they plant a device meant to stop the Raka from talking to each other and controlling things. But some of the resistance fighters die while doing this. The movie finishes with Sarah telling Amir to use his powers because she thinks he's the only hope for humanity. Thanks for tuning in, guys.